for Zoom. Okie dokie. So we are going to start with this uh, twisted rosy sort of um, technique. So you're going to need one of your strips of fabric, either color will do. Uh, I am going to thread up a needle. And I am going, because I'm using this turquoise thread, um, fabric, I'm going to use this bright orange thread to maybe make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. But if you were choosing your own threads, you would pick something that, you know, would sort of be hidden in the fabric. You've all been given random fabrics and random threads. Um, but if I were doing this outside of class, I might use a white or even uh, this green will kind of disappear. Um, the idea is that we're not really going to see any of our threads but you might see a little bit of your thread. So to start, uh, we need to find the end of our thread. And uh, if we were using the threader that came in your kit today, there's a, a sort of a metal tongue. And what happens is you thread that metal tongue. Hold on, I need to take off my spectacles. You thread up that metal tongue into the eye of the needle. So you're still threading the needle, you're just threading it with uh, this metal tongue that's on the threader. So I have the, uh, that wire going through the eye of my needle and then I am putting the thread, dropping the thread, I am picking up the thread again and putting it through, let's see, putting it through that metal tongue, or you could just thread your needle. If you're good at just threading your needle, that's fine. So I'm putting the, th the thread through, I'm pulling it, giving myself a little length. And now I'm gently gonna pull all of that through my needle. So essentially I'm taking that metal tongue back out of the hole, the eye of the needle and blammo. Um, my needle is threaded with the thread, or you can just thread it, uh, just thread the needle with the thread if you don't want to use that doohickey. I just thought I would show that because I know in one of our last sewing classes, uh, there was one or two students who'd never seen one of those. So I'm giving myself, there's an old wives tale that you're supposed to choose how long your thread is, like from the crook of your elbow to your hand. Um, I think that's pretty good advice. Yeah, it's easier to re-thread and, and start a new length than to have this long thread that you're constantly uh, trying to untangle. So then I'm just gonna cut it. So I have two, I have two threads here. So I'm up through my needle. I have two, uh, I've, I've double backed and I'm going to make a knot. So we've got a knot in the end of our thread. And the, what's so awesome about this project, nothing has to be all that perfect or wonderful or fancy. So I've just got a little knot here. And we're using a woven cotton here and, and a pretty nice one. So the, the weave is, is pretty dense. So even a small knot will uh, be just fine for today. So what we're doing is, uh, if this button was not here, uh, we would be starting, you would see the start of our, our little posy here. So essentially, we are going to be twisting fabric and wrapping it behind itself. Like here's the sort of the first layer, and then you can see here's my second layer, and then I got to a third layer and like three and a half layers. So depending on how tightly you, uh, you twist your fabric, um, how tightly you twist the fabric around itself. You could have a really dense, tight blossom, or you could have this even bigger than I have it here. So we're gonna take the, the whole length of one of our strips, the whole length from selvage to selvage, and selvages, if you don't know, are these bits at the end of the fabric where when it was being manufactured, it was on some sort of machinery so that it could be woven. So we're gonna take from selvage to selvage, doesn't matter where you start. I'm gonna start at this blunt end. It honestly doesn't matter. And I've got a pretty side 
to a brighter side and a less pretty side or a lighter side. You can choose which is which. Um, you choose for yourself which is the right side. If you like the softer green teal of this fabric or the of the yellow, then go for it. I'm going to use it as it was intended. So that pretty side is out. So I'm just going to fold this in half. So um, the uh, wrong sides are touching, wrong sides are touching. And I really only have to concern myself with maybe an inch and a half, two inches at a time. Don't worry about that whole length. We'll, we'll get to it. So I've got, you know, maybe two inches here of fabric that I'm looking at. It's just folded in half. You could press this if you wanted to. Um, you could press this whole thing in half. I don't think it's necessary because we're get, we're making it sort of a, a wacky, loose sort of cabbage rose sort of uh, weirdo flower. You know, I'm the I feel like I'm the queen of weirdo flowers. Like I, I pulled out like one of my round and round roses. Like I just like weirdo flowers. So this is a, a fabric version of that. So uh, so we've got it. Uh, wrong side to wrong side and we've got about two inches and i'm just going to make uh like a 90 degree fold here just so i've made like the letter l or a seven just a little fold and that's the only time we're really making something so tight because that's just sort of our base that's what we're going to be working off of. And I'm going to put one stitch in it. So I'm going to start, I'm going to consider the part that's closer to the table, uh, my back side of this for now, that could change as I'm going. And I'm just going to put one stitch in there just to hold it in place. I, again, I'm using this bright orange thread. So I've just come up and down. I have this teeny tiny little stitch there just to hold it in place. And now the fun begins. So we're going to continuously keep be folding, folding, folding this in half as we go along. Again, I don't feel the need to pin it, to press it, to do anything. I think it's just fine like it is. And now we're going to start twisting our fabric and sort of turning it. I'm going to now uh, so I've twisted it and you could go either way. You really can't do this wrong. You're gonna keep just zhuzhing. You're gonna be zhuzhing all night. So I'm gonna twist it and, oh, in fact, maybe I'll twist it twice. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna twist it twice. I'm feeling like twist it once and twice. And now I'm gonna place it on this little platform that I've created by making that, that L shape gonna place it there and I'm gonna put a stitch right there just to hold it to that platform. You don't need to pull very tightly. We're not really trying to gather this. In the next version that we do, we are gathering, but for this one, we're just uh, laying fabric on top of fabric. Okay, so now I'm gonna do that again. I'm just gonna twist it, maybe I'll twist it twice and I'm going to lay it on top of the fabric and put a little stitch. So I'm gonna be quiet while you all kind of get your hands working to get, get two of those little twists. And don't worry if it looks crazy right now, we're gonna, it's gonna look better or crazier. Who, who can tell? Good question, Philomena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you when you start to twist, do you hold the fabric where you've made the L on the larger part, or do you hold it up at the top where the pieces where the L part is sticking up? Oh, good question. So on it sort of doesn't matter. I'm left-handed, so I'm naturally go in a certain direction, which means depending on how I was holding my L, it could be on the top or on the bottom. Um, it, it's, it sort of doesn't matter, but it's a good question. We're just going to continuously do this 
So I've got my, my fabric folded in half. I'm doing a twist. And now uh, on this third one, I'm going to go behind, behind. So I had been going on top. You think about like, this is the, like the bud of the rose. And I just wanted to get a, a little bit of fabric on that bud. And so now I'm gonna twist again. And when I place it, I'm gonna place it behind whatever I have going on. So instead of on top, I'm going to go behind whatever I have going on. You could twist it twice. And for me, I'm gonna flip it over so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna put a little stitch to catch that. And it does, you don't have to make pretty stitches. I am making some, what we call big honking stitches. It doesn't have to be pretty. No one's gonna see this in the back. And again, if I'm using this bright orange thread so that you can see what's going on. And in fact, I'm gonna cut these little uh, legs I've got from my knot. I don't need those. Okay, and so now I'm gonna flip it over so I can see the front. And I'm gonna do like a quarter turn or so. And I'm going to twist. So again, the fabric is always being held in half. It's always half the width of what it was when it came to you. So I'm gonna do another twist and I'm gonna place it behind. I'm gonna flip it over so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to just put a little stitch to hold that new twist in place. And I'm going to flip it to the front so that I can see what I'm doing. And then this time, I think just, just to mix it up a little, I'm going to twist it twice just to give it a different look. Place it behind. And that's how we look at my yellow one again. This is how I got all of these rows. So the you can't see it because this button is here, but the first couple stitches were sort of on top of that, that L shape that we made. Um, and you can see, you can't see it at all anymore. And then I started, after those first couple, I started to go behind and behind and behind. And that's what creates like this layered effect to our posy. So oh, I just thought, twist, twist. Go behind. And then depending on how far you tuck it in behind the, the last layer will determine how wide your rose ends up getting. So I'm gonna turn it over so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm, I, I've gotten to the part where I'm on that flap that I created. I'm just gonna stitch through all those layers just to tack it down. And when, so when your thread starts to get to be uh, too short, like don't let it get shorter than your thumb. Then you'll need to uh, make a couple of tacking stitches or a knot and snip and get a new thread. Don't let your thread get too short because it is painful to try to make a knot when the thread is too, too short. So this is what we're doing over and over again, always going behind, always having the fabric folded in half. And like I said, we're just sort of zhuzhing as we go along, deciding how far out we want the layer to be. And for this yellow one here, I use the entire length of the fabric that you've been given. If you wanted something larger, you could just add another um, another strip of fabric. Shorter, you would just cut your fabric. And it's okay, like right now I've got a space here where it's not folded perfectly in half. And I kind of like that. I'm seeing a little bit of the backside here. And I think that's okay. That sort of gives it another layer, uh, a little depth of color. So I'm twisting, 
holding it where I want it. Maybe I'll twist that twice, holding it where I want it. I flip over and I tack it down. And now I can see I don't have enough thread here. It's about the length of my thumb. So I'm gonna put a couple of little tacking stitches right here. Just kind of go back and forth to knot that thread. Or I could snip it and tie it, you know, like you're tying your shoe. I'm gonna cut that off and get myself some fresh thread. Typically when I'm doing this, um, I'll thread up uh, three or so needles. So uh, I don't have to stop my momentum and I can just keep sewing when I get to the end of one. You see, this eventually gets to be quite quick. You know, you just twist and and tack, twist and tack. And again, the back doesn't have to be cute. You're not going to see that. So a really great way, I think, to use up scraps of fabric or remnants. You could sew a number of fabrics together to make a strip. And maybe you had a, an old heirloom blanket or quilt that just was not gonna see uh, any life anymore. You can imagine taking little bits of the, the fabric and making these little posies for people in your family. That way everyone can get a little bit of that heirloom. Folding in half, twisting, and tacking it behind. And if something just isn't tacked down well enough, um, at, at the end, you can always go back and um, add a couple extra stitches. But you'll see when we're putting the pin back on, because we're gonna put uh, those metal pin backs on this, and we're also gonna put the green tool on these, that you have another chance to put some extra stitches in if you need to. This is definitely a fun project to do with little kids. Um, teaches them, you know, some hand-eye coordination, threading a needle. Um, you don't need very many supplies. And again, you kind of can't mess it up. Now, don't don't stab yourself and bleed on it. But other than that, I don't know about that. You kind of can't mess it up statement. You no. Know, 
Well, remember, I, I've said this before, it's sometimes the third time you try a project that you knock it out of the park. Um, but you'll see, once we put the buttons on, maybe you'll be like, wow, it's amazing. Hey, Carol, it's good to see you. But Carol, just so you know, we're, uh, we're recording this for YouTube so that some students who couldn't make it uh, can watch. So ju just an FYI, I just wanted you to know that, okay? And again, you don't want to pull too tightly uh, because then you'll start to um, you'll start to gather it in more. The next the next version, you'll see that we'll we actually will be ruching and and gathering things. Hey, honey, stop it. Is there a question? Sort of lost my spot. I'm getting towards the end. A couple more twists to do. And you want to, before you get to the very, very end, we're going to create another little uh, platform like we did in the beginning. And I can see there's a couple of places where I definitely need to tack it down a little bit better, but I'll be able to work on that uh, when we're putting the pin back on. Well, Lamina, mine doesn't I, look mine doesn't look anything like yours. Let me see. Hold it up. No, it's awful. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just keep going, being awful. All right, because <laughs> you know, see, your hand, your I think your hands will warm up. <laughs> and I, I do understand it's a little awkward that we're not in the same room and doing this. Yeah, no, it's not looking good. Yeah, mine isn't either. <laughs> okay. All right, well, well, you know, again, I've made hundreds of these, literally hundreds of these, so. Um, hey, I've torn, your, I've, I've torn mine out three times and it still doesn't look like anything. Okay, well, give, Give yourselves, give yourselves a round of applause for being here, regardless. <laughs> and 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 maybe the next design that we do, uh, maybe that that will be your design, and something will just click. click. As a, okay. So we're basically creating gathers, little at a time, twisting the fabric. And before I get to the very end, I'm going to leave maybe an inch or so untwisted so that, again, I have like a little platform for the back. And I have not taken my own advice. I've let my thread get a little short here. So because my thread is so short, I'm not going to be able to tack it. So I'm going to cut it very close to the needle, put my needle safely somewhere. And then I'm going to just make a couple of knots right here in the thread. So again, we're using a double thread. So. Just kind of treating it like your shoelaces at this point. Okay. And just so you can see, the back of mine uh, does not look very beautiful, does not look very nice. And that's totally fine. Here's what the front looks like right now. So I started uh, in the middle. I did a couple of twists sort of on top of each other. And then I started to go uh, twist and tack it behind the previous row. 
now that I'm at my end, I have uh, this piece that I'm keeping a little bit longer. First, I need to thread up a new needle. She said she put the needle, yes, she did put the needle somewhere she could see it. This will work with knit fabrics too, or if you have little scraps of wool, this looks really beautiful with like discarded wool. If you, uh, if you sh shrunk a sweater or something, <laughs> cut it into strips and you can make these little posies. It, it looks so charming and it sort of like kind of holds itself together because of the, the fabric. So I've got this little flap here. It's not enough to do another twist anywhere. So I'm going to, going to just sort of cover up all of that background stuff that's going on. See, it's like it never happened. And I can see a spot where I need to tack it. This petal here isn't quite tacked well enough. So I'm just going to uh, run my needle through those bits just to tack them in place. I can cut off these threads and just run a couple of stitches around this last bottom area. Again, if you're using thread that matches the fabric, you're you're not going to see it at all. Um, like I, when I'm looking up close, I can see my little orange dots here because of the orange thread I'm using. I'm just tacking a couple of places. And I'm going to knot it right here. So I'm just going to see if you can. So I've got, uh, here's the end of my thread where my finger is pointing. Here's the thread on my needle. And I'm just going to make a loop and come back through. But you can make a knot however it is that makes sense in your brain. I, I, again, I understand us not being in the same room makes it a little harder. And in order to get this loop of thread down by the fabric, if I put my needle against the fabric, hard to do while I'm trying to hold it up and pull, that knot will go right against the fabric like a magic trick. And again, I just kind of zhuzh it. And I kind of like that this uh, selvage is hanging out a little bit, this like little wispy part. Like I think that was a happy accident. So I gave you all some of this tool netting. I gave you like a square or a rectangle. What I did for our two samples here was I cut this rectangle in half with my scissor or in on diagonal on the diagonally, on the diagonal in half. I did not measure, I did not do it very carefully. No one's gonna really see the shape of it once it's sewn. I only need one for right now. So I have this triangle which you cannot see on camera. Let's see. Can you see it then? Let's see, let me find a way make this easier to see. Ah, that's a little bit better. So I have this triangle. So what I did was I cut that rectangle in half on the diagonal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along this edge here. I'm just going to put some stitches in and that's going to gather this up into a leaf shape. Bada bing. So I've got, I had my rectangle. I cut it on the diagonal. Very wonky. Doesn't have to be perfect. Did not use a ruler. And then I'm going to stitch along this long cut. That's going to gather it up. And that is our leaf shape. So as I have it gathered right now. I can just throw my needle right through the bottom here a couple of times. So I still have my needle attached because I had enough thread. You may need to uh, do something where you get some more thread. So I'm just gonna make sure I have all the bits 
it's a little fiddly in your hand. I'm gonna run my needle through that and bring it all the way down to my posy. So I ran my needle through all of that um, tool that I was holding in my hand and I'm gonna run it, uh, run a couple of stitches just to hold it in place. Again, this is the back, no one's going to see it. There are no Olympics here. We're not trying to win any awards for the back of our project. And then that is our, let's see if I can, that is our leaf in quotation marks right here. Again, I'm going to put a, just a couple stitches to make sure that's secure. I'm gonna put a, a knot in so that it's sort of like really well, um, really well made necklaces like pearl necklaces will have a knot after each bead or pearl so that if, if the thread were to break, you'd only lose one pearl, right? So I put a knot every so often that way, if for some reason a thread were to break, um, I wouldn't lose the whole shebang, just the, the last thing that was next to the knot. Then I'm just gonna, I gave you all some random buttons. So then I just put a button in the very center and that helps to collapse this whole thing to hold it all together. Um, for some reason, I think Chris Karras on the button, for some reason to me is cuter, but you can do crisscross, you can do 11s, you know, side by side. Uh, for some reason, I, I think that little X like marks the spot just looks cute. So I'm running my needle up the button and then down the button all the way through the layers. And you may have to really push a little bit if, um, if you have a lot of layers there. And this isn't the type of button that's going to get a, a lot of use. It's not like your coat button. So you really only have to secure it once. Like I just made an X there. And again, I'm going to do some tacking stitches in the back and a little knot so that, uh, so that it uh, is secure. And if yours looks wonky, let it be wonky. I uh, can ba basically guarantee that the more that you do this, uh, the less wonky they may be, or you may decide you like them super wonky and you may just embrace the wonk. I'm not going to put the pin back on this one just yet. I want to walk us through the next type uh, and then I'll, I'll we'll go through the putting the pin back on and that's that metal um, that's that metal piece that will go behind here so that you can attach this to your hat, your car, your coat or your scarf or whatever. You can also put um, like alligator clips, you know, or um, a, a little uh, like a head, uh, what do I want to say, a barrette that flips back uh, open. You could make this into a barrette. These look really cute on, on little babies. You could sew this to an elastic for uh, like a baby's headband. That would look so cute. Okay, so uh, how are we doing? How are we feeling? Don't be discouraged. It's okay. <laughs> Our next one is a, a ruching pattern, a ruching pattern. So it's basically a gathering stitch, but we're going to do it in a very specific way in a pattern. 
there are so many different patterns that you could do. Uh, our pattern is basically going to be some uh, triangles or hills and valleys. So I, I have this piece of paper here just to, uh, so that it makes it a little easier for me, for you to visualize where our stitches are going to go. I'm just going to pause a moment to get a drink of water. Okay, so this is the, the general shape that yours is going to turn into. So you see I have my bit of uh, netting here. This one has a pin back on it. This one has another button, sweet little button I found on my travels. Um, and again, we are going to be using a pattern of sewing that's these triangles. The important thing to recognize is, so this is representing our folded fabric. So this is just our fabric enlarged. It's just a piece of paper. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, which is fold our fabric in half. Uh, again, you could choose to have pretty sides uh, out or you could have the back of the fabric out. And I'm gonna suggest that whatever fabric you choose, you only need to use half of it to make a, a posy that's this size. You only need half of it. So um, you could cut it now or cut it later. I actually um, cut this as I was sewing it. Once I saw the size of it, I, I thought that was big enough for what I wanted. So um, that is student's choice. You can use the whole thing or just use half. And it's easy to find the half because uh, there's a fold line on your, on your fabric. So this is what we do. We create a knot with our thread. We're gonna use a double thread again. So this little dot here represents the knot. We go through both layers. We're gonna, uh, the whole time we're gonna go through both layers. So we're gonna start by walking up the mountain and you could measure this out if you wanted perfect little ruches. If you wanted perfect uh, little folds in here, you could measure this out. I'm an eyeball kind of lady, so I uh, eyeballed it. Um, so we started here and we stitch, stitch, stitch all the way up the mountain, just little stitches. And then here's the trick. You need to go around to the back of the fabric and then back up. So essentially you are going to be enca encasing this little bit of fabric here. So we go up and down, up and down, up and down the mountain, around the fabric so that we encase this little bit right at the top. And then we're going to just start walking back down the mountain. Do, 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 do. Little stitches, little stitches through both layers of fabric. And then when we get to the end, we need to again enclose, encase, uh, the, the edge of this fabric. So where I have that little dot, we're coming around and that means we're gonna be going back up the fabric and we're gonna start up the mountain again. We're gonna get to the end and we have to enclose the fabric. That's what creates these uh, inside little gathers here. So not this part, but right here, because we went around the fabric as we pulled on our thread, um, that creates each of these little petals. So you can imagine the wider your mountains, the larger your petals. And if you made very narrow mountain, you very skinny, skinny little mountains, uh, you would have very skinny little petals. So, uh, this is what it actually looks like when you're doing it with the fabric. So I'm gonna move my paper, keep it right there so you can see. Here's the one we're working on. I'm gonna move those out of the way. I'm gonna grab my yellow fabric this time. 
And just because I know I want it to be about this shape, I'm just going to cut it in half now. It's a little easier to manipulate. And again, I could always add more fabric if I wanted. You can use the whole length. It really doesn't matter. You'll just get a larger posy. All right, so there's that. Here is my needle. And let's see what's showing up best on screen. I thought if I use this dark green, if I use that dark green on here, let's see which one is showing up on camera better. So there's the green and there is the orange. Let's see. I'm gonna use the dark green on this, but again, you know, if you were doing this for yourself, you would use a, a thread that matched or got hidden. And again, we need a double thread for this. We especially need a double thread because we're going to be pulling on the threads to do some gathers. I have a little knot, hold on. Come on. Oh my goodness, I have a little knot, it won't come off. Shazam, I got it, okay. So I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm going to thread up this needle. The double thread. Oops. And again, I think this is a good way to teach kids too because with the double thread with the knot on the end, it helps them so that when they're sewing, they don't continuously unthread their needle. I always imagine that you'll go and teach other people these things, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to transfer this information to someone else. Okay, so. Philomena, Philomena. Um, yes, yes. How, how long should the thread be? So I typically use um, from my fingers to about the crook of my elbow. Okay. You'll have to probably re-thread part of the way through the project, but it makes it easier so it doesn't get all tangled. Uh, it all tangled up. And I once heard that it's an old wives tale that when you have your thread too long, your love will move away from you it'll be as long as your thread is that's how far away your your love will be oh my gosh there's a puppy on screen i can't pay attention looks a little <laughs> bit like a goat <laughs> um so again you're going to choose uh if you want to use uh, the the correct side as the outside or the uh the unintended right side as the right side i'm going to use the bright side as my correct side. So I'm folding it in half. And again, I'm left-handed, so this may look different uh, depending on how you're holding your needle. And I'm just giving it a little finger press. Again, you could press this whole thing at an ironing board if you wanted to. Okay, so let's see. So here is my fabric. Here is the, the drawn representation. So I am going to walk, I'm gonna start uh, with my needle and my knot in the corner. So I'm holding both layers together. That helps me out a little bit. My fold is at the top here. My open side is at the bottom, but it really doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to start at the bottom and these polka dots actually, depending on how you've got yours folded, if you look at it, uh, these polka dots form those mountain shapes up and down. You could follow the line of the polka dots if you wanted to. Uh, this is a, a, a fun thing to do with stripes too. You get some really interesting patterns with stripes. So essentially I am going to stitch uh, all the way up on the diagonal to I, until I get to this folded bit. When I get to the folded bit, I'm going to go around the fabric and come up the front so that this bit at the very top, which is the top of our mountain, is enclosed with thread. 
And then I'm gonna walk back down, make sure that I go around this cut edge. And then I'm gonna walk back up. And so here's what it looks like. Here's my very first stitch. Here's my um, folded side and my open side. Again, it doesn't really matter. If you're right-handed, you may be looking at it this way. So you may be going up this way, around, down, and around. But I'm a hardcore lefty here, so let me move that. So, and again, I'm using just, right now I'm just using half of the length. It does, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going, to, I've got a knot in my thread. It's a double thread and I come up in that corner and that helps me because it holds the fabric together. And then uh, I'm going to do what's called a rocking stitch, but you can do a stab stitch. I'll show you both. So here we are. I am going to on the diagonal, make a bunch of little stitches until I get to that top. And I'm not pulling too hard right now. So we can see I've got what looks like one, two, three stitches on the diagonal. Now that I'm at the top, my thread is behind. Ow, don't bleed on it, Philomena. Hold on, uh, hold please. You, we knew what this was gonna, that this was gonna happen. Okay, sewing is not for the meek. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm, my thread is coming from the back right now. I need to go around and make sure I am catching the top of that fabric. So I'm in the back, I'm going around and then I'm going to stab and stitch going back down the mountain. And again, I won't pull too tight right now. So I have one, two, three gone up. It doesn't matter how many stitches you do. You don't need a ton. Can you see a little bit of this green thread? Can you see how that is encapsulating that folded edge? Because I went around it and then came back down the mountain. That's the magic sauce, that top part right there is the magic sauce. Because what happens when I do end up pulling, that creates the divot in the petal. I'll, I'll straighten that out so you can see. No, you don't need to ruch it just yet. You can, but you don't have to. So now that I'm at the bottom of the mountain, I have to do that same thing where I go around the fabric. So I'm coming out the front, I need to put the needle to the back. And again, just see, I've encapsulated that fold, uh, that open edge. I've gone around the fabric and now I'll go back up the mountain. So you can see that ziggity zaggity situation I have. Now that I'm at the top, I always go around. I always go around. That going around is what is going to allow us to create the petals. And as I said before, this is just one shape that you could make. If you made something that was in a U shape, you would get a different shape petal. You could do triangle and then a U, triangle and then a U, and you'd have every other petal would have a different shape. And essentially it's the same thing over and over and over until you get to the end. You're always holding the fabric in half. You're always going around when you get to the, the bottom or the top of the mountain.
And then I like, once I have a few of these uh, mountains done, I like to give it a pull. So I'll hold on to the fabric and pull. And then you can see I have this little petal. Isn't it cute? And how I got this petal was by going around the fabric. Okay, we are back. All right, so around, we're always going around. I'm at the top of the mountain, so I'm going around. And then the bottom of the mountain I go around over and over until you get to about an inch away from the end of the whole strip. And this one, you don't have to thread your needle up quite as often because once you pull on the thread, you can uh, you see that you have more thread available to you. So this one's a little bit more abstract than the, the first one, the, the posy where we were twisting. This is a bit more mathematical. And if you do get to a point where you need to uh, add more thread, I would gather up all that you can gently um, and make a knot. And then you just will start again wherever it is that you ended that thread. So back and forth, always going over the end. You could use this technique, um, we're going to be wrapping this up so it looks like a little flower, but you could be using this technique uh, to create like an edging on a garment or um, again, a, a little headband or something. You could leave this long like it is without wrapping it into a posy shape. I love ruffles and things. I just just find them so charming. I always have when I learned this technique, I just couldn't stop making stuff with it.
Okay, I'm almost getting to the end of mine here. Oops, yeah. And like I said, I will leave about an inch or so unsewn. So that once again, I have like a little platform to wind all this up on. Okay, so I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave, a, I'm gonna leave about, maybe that's an inch and a half or so. I'm gonna leave that unsewn and I'm going to gather up everything I'm going to lay it down, make sure it's not too twisted up. You may have some threads that are coming loose because they are un, uh, the edges are, are raw. I kind of think that's part of the charm of it getting like um, sort of roughed up a little and you, the threads coming out. So once I get to the end and I've got it root, all ruched up, I'll put a little tacking stitch right at the end or not or something just to hold it all together so that it doesn't continuously undo itself. And again, if you're using thread that matches, you won't even see that. So now, uh, so now that isn't gonna go anywhere. I just find it so satisfying to touch. So you see you have little U shapes all over. You can kind of fiddle with them. We don't have to really worry about them too much because in the next step, uh, we're gonna do sort of the same thing we did with our, our first posy that where we uh, twisted it up on itself. But now when we do this, we'll, we have these, um, these petals. So you can uh, decide if you need to get a new thread or if you're cool with what you've got. I'll just wait a couple moments uh, in case you're still sewing. So now we're, we're gonna treat this a lot like the, the first posy that we did, where we just sort of, um, I've got this length here. I'm gonna hold that to the back so that I sort of have a platform. So I have this extra space that isn't been, hasn't been sewn. I'm gonna just hold that to the back. It's like a little platform so I have something to work on. If you didn't have this, you could take a piece of felt or another piece of fabric and just hold it behind your project. So just so you have some base to sew into. So I'm going to just put mine towards the back here. And then I'm just going to, and yours may go in the other direction if you're right-handed. I'm gonna take a couple of these petals and turn them in on themselves. So I've just taken a couple of these petals and I've just, so if this is gonna be my outside of the flower and this is the inside of my flower, I'm going to just, overlap some of those inside petals. It's a little fiddly, we have a lot to hold there. And I'm gonna put a stitch in there just to hold those petals together. So now I sort of have these three petals all attached and maybe I'm gonna tack that down. I'm just gonna put a couple extra stitches so that doesn't keep moving. And I'm I also, you know, sewing it to that base that I have. And there's, there's really no wrong way here. Uh, we're, we're just going to be gathering all of these stitches onto themselves, all of these petals, I mean, all these petals. So I've got these three that I've stitched the inner, inner space. So now I'm gonna just, wrap this again and get some of the more of those petals to touch the center but this will be the center of our flower here's the outside of our flower and going into the base and into those inside petals and pulling a little and so now i have one two three four five six petals it's starting to look a little bit like a sunflower this yellow fabric and I'm just gonna go and sew into that base and then into that petal again, just to hold it. And so that was, uh, it almost con 
completed my first round. I think I need one more petal to complete that first round. I'm gonna put one more petal on that first round, but you'll have to look at yours and see what it is you need because yeah, you'll have sewn it a little differently than mine. And now I have all of these petals. I'm gonna start doing that same thing we did with the, po the first posy. I'm gonna to start to sew them behind the first row. So I'm gonna actually move my little flap out of the way a little bit, just so I don't see it. I'm gonna start putting them behind that first round of petals and tack it down. They're so just gonna tuck it in behind. And you'll just have, you'll have to look at uh, what your petals are doing. And then I have just a couple more petals here. Again, I'm just gonna tuck them behind. See if I can tighten that up. And it, again, I understand it could, it's a little bit fiddly, but really just jam some stitches anywhere you can <laughs> to secure those petals down and give it a little pull. Sort of a chrysanthemum shape or a daisy. I think it looks quite nice in this yellow fabric. Here's, and here's the. Again, each of these are gonna look a little different because your mountains may have been uh, steeper or more narrow. Well, Amina, I have to leave you. I'll have to practice on this girl. Okay, uh, we hope to get the video up so you can see the end. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ruthie. Have, Thank have you. a good summer. Bye, ladies. Thanks. Bye. So now I'm just tacking uh, the back down to that little flap I had. That's why I don't sew all the, I don't ruche all the way to the end. I like having that little like running board. So I think I'm going to re-thread. I'm, I'm getting short here. So now to uh, attach my uh, my gauzy leaf here. Uh, again, I'm going to just sort of fold in that that diagonal that I had. Pinch it. I know it may be hard to see. It's so. Uh, Uh, got like a gossamer, it's maybe hard to see on camera. So I've just um, folded in all of the same thing as before. I've sewn uh, that whole length together and then I will sew it to the posy in some place that I think it looks good. Okay, I like it right about there. So again, because I have that backing piece there, I have a little bit more real estate, some flat fabric I can sew it onto. So cute. Again, how cute would this be with, uh, is a little barrette.
And I will make a knot just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. We can play the button game. Maybe I'll use a white one this time. I'm gonna I mean, you don't have to put a button in the middle. I just I just think it's sweet. And you certainly uh, uh, you know, if you have some fabric glue, you certainly could glue a button on. But since we have our stitching materials out, why not? Why not go for it? And this would be really sweet as like the something old or something borrowed or something blue part uh, for a bride. It could be all of those things. You could uh, lend them your posy or, <laughs> you know, have a, you know, a vintage button from your wedding dress or, you know, I could just think of a, a hundred sweet little things you could do with these. Cute, cute, cute. And you can see a, you can see some of my uh, threads coming through because I use that green. But if you had fa a thread that was closer to your fabric, you wouldn't even see it. So the last part to both of these is sewing on. Um, if you want to make this a pin, sewing on your pin back. Again, you could glue this on, but I think. Um, again, since we have our needle and thread out, it's just more secure. Uh, you see it has the ones that I've gotten us have these three holes in them. That's what we're going to be stitching through. So you need to open up the little gate, makes it easier. And just be careful because there's a, a pokey bit at the end. There's a, the pin, but there's also another pokey bit there. And I like when my pins uh, are sewn on horizontal to the ground of how, how I think I'm going to wear it. So I just give it a look and see if I, if I have an idea of which direction I think I'm gonna wear it. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I like to put them on uh, so that the pin is horizontal to the ground or parallel to the ground is what I'm trying to say. That's the word. So I've got my thread in here. And so now I'm just going to go up one of the holes and around the metal of the pin back into that hole. So I did one at the top. Now I'll go around bottom of that same hole and up it's a little fiddly when you have the green, the, the netting, the tool, because uh, it wants to be involved in everything you're doing. So now I'll go over to the next hole, that middle hole. And this also helps you to secure your petals in place. You can pick up a petal, go to up in the top. And then around down the bottom to that same hole. Again, it's a little fiddly. You can use this, you can use both of these techniques uh, also with lace or ribbon. You don't have to think about just using fabric 
for this. You can ruche up uh, ribbon or lace in the same way. Okay, I'm gonna go back down and go to the, the last hole. So I'd never start in the middle one. I always go to one of the ends and then work my way left or right. Then I will uh, knot off my thread right there and close up my pin. I'm going to uh, stop the recording so that we can all chat.